Hi, my dear Astro family. Today I would like to make a video for you about Juno in the sign of Virgo. Now, I have started a bit of a series this year about uh, the upcoming themes for 2024. So you can revisit those if you wish. I made a video about Jupiter, Pluto, Trine, how um, Jupiter in the sign of Gemini will play out and so forth. I also made a video about Jupiter and Uranus conjunction, which I might be revisiting in the near future. But this time around, I wanted to pay attention to Juno in the sign of Virgo. Now, one of the reasons why I picked this topic is because Juno will be staying in the sign of Virgo until the middle of August 2024. And it has already started this journey in the sign of Virgo uh, in the middle of October. So you might already feel the shift Juno was in the sign of Leo before, and then now it has shifted into the sign of Virgo, where it's going to be spending 10 months. Now, on the 2nd of December, I will be making a webinar about uh, the return phase angle transit charts. Now, have you ever wondered, you know, that you have got, I don't know, Saturn transiting your Venus, for example, and then nothing really happens in your love life or finances and so forth? Uh, and the reason being is because often I think transits are not necessarily used in the right way. So I've decided to put together a webinar about how to check your return angle phases in transits. So for example, imagine that you have got a Saturn going through your Venus, just like I'm experiencing that very shortly. And uh, Saturn and Venus in my natal chart, let's say, are a trine phase. Let's say they are 130 degree apart from each other. So whenever that 130 degree forms uh, in the sky, in space, then it's going to be affecting you somehow. And so this is the webinar topic. I'm going to be teaching you about how to look at these, how to read these type of charts, because it gives you an individual chart. And I'm also going to be teaching you whether, for example, that Venus is going to be affecting, for example, your relationship department, or it's going to be more to do with money, or it's going to be, let's say, third house matters so that you can get a better understanding of your transits. You know, one of the big problems with trends is that obviously it has become so popular and then there are those cookbooks out there uh, and then you read them through and then you realize that, you know what, it might not be happening in my life. Why is that? And maybe the answer is going to be the return phase angle uh, chart. So if you are interested in this, not necessarily a new technique, it's been around for a while, but if you are interested to explore how it works, then please join me on the 2nd of December. And by the way, I am running a special Black Friday discount. So all my courses and webinars are 60% off, up to 60% off. Not everything is going to be 60%, but some bits and bobs are up to 60% off. And if you wish to book a reading with me for next year, my calendar is open and also discounted. So let's get started with Juno in the sign of Virgo. So uh, as I said, it's going to be in the sign of Virgo till the middle of August next year. So let's explore what Juno is actually in our birth chart to start with, so that we can have a little bit of a recap on that. So on one hand, Juno represents all your one-to-one -one relationships, whether we are talking about business partnership or marriage, uh, any type of partnership really comes underneath Juno, but usually this is more a romantic feeling to it. Now, of course, therefore, it brings in somehow the Libra archetype. Now, if you think about that, we have got the eclipses happening in the sign of Aries and Libra, then we, you already have got the idea that the relationship is going to be a very big topic in the world in the next one year. 
So Juno represents anything to do with equality and freedom as well. I don't want to go into the mythology of Juno, but unfortunately she got cheated on. She wanted to take revenge on her partner, uh, but she would have never sacrificed her relationship or she would have never cheated on someone. However, she got betrayed. So it talks about pretty much your marital standards in your chart. It talks about the way you want to be courted, for example, such as uh, engagement, marriage, unfortunately, it talks about separation and divorce as well, or anything to do with the legality part of a marriage. But also it can represent, uh, for example, a anniversary, wedding anniversary. Uh, she was, by the way, the goddess of childbirth as well, so she could represent that too. Also, when it comes to such things as vocational astrology, Juno is going to represent anything to do with host and hostesses, so the hospitality industry. But it comes with an element of more to do with the posh hospitality industries because she also rules over etiquette as well. Uh, when it comes to you, uh, pers on a personal level, it talks about how you actually care about yourself, whether you put a makeup on, or what type of perfume you kind of like, what type of decorations you like around yourself, and so forth. On a social scale point of view, she would be someone who is actually the patron of women. So working uh, towards women's rights, for example, but also it would represent anything to do with women's support groups as well. So you can see that uh, she is all about commitment. She is all about connections being made. So these are some of the archetypical meaning of Juno. Now, um, um, in the sign of Virgo, Juno becomes a lot more committed to a relationship. It's going to be having a lot more practical approach how to handle a relationship. So on one hand, I believe uh, Juno going into the sign of Virgo is very much about uh, how much the female kind of like these group groups are going to be appearing even more where uh, females might feel that they need more support. So it's kind of like a little bit of a, um, a group ideology of females getting together and then maybe they discussing their relationship problems. Remember that Virgo represents anything to do with uh, details, especially small details. So what it pretty much tells you is that you're gonna have to make certain type of small improvements in your relationship department or anything to do with your commitments, how to improve things. Often Virgo is about taking things apart and then putting them back together. There's an element of curiosity to it, right? The reason why we take something apart, because usually it doesn't work, right? And then I want to fix it. And then I'm going to put back, put them back together and then I make it work somehow. So often what happens with Juno in the sign of Virgo is that there is a lack of emotional connection. We tend to be working on our relationship quite a lot. But you might start realizing that, you know what, it's not going anywhere. Remember that the opposing sign from Virgo is actually uh, Pisces, where Saturn resides. So the very first aspect Juno made when he entered the sign of Virgo was an opposition to Saturn. So we have got basically the two planets which are in charge of commitment were opposing each other. So it could indicate situations uh, for you where there are too many commitments on my plate and then I'm ignoring, for example, the relationship department or I'm ignoring my spiritual development, but something is missing here. So there is an, a need here to bring these two back in balance. Now, Juno will be making two, another, uh, two more aspects to Saturn in the future, and I'm going to be giving you the dates as well a little bit later on. But I wanted to start with this, because in order for your relationship to work, you're going to have to make some elements of adjustments, and you're going to have to commit to it. You don't need to think about anything big at all. It's something which is 
tiny. In the meantime, just Lola is popping up here. She wants to be in the video too. And she's bringing her ball. She's begging to play, but she has to wait a little bit. So, Lola, patience. Okay, so whatever we decide to make adjustments about, it has to be a little one. Um, often what happens with Juno in Virgo is that we kind of feel like that um, a relationship is a hard work, especially when it's being opposed by Saturn, because it means that you have to give up some of your needs as well. Now, Juno will be retrograde. The reason why it spends quite loads of time in the sign of Virgo, because it will be retrograde from uh, uh, 11th of January until the 21st of April. Um, and then basically the retrograde motion starts on 21 degree of Virgo and uh, it's going to go back to about 8 degree of Virgo. Now, I would like you to remember these degrees. Um, and the reason why it's very important is because if you go back and then revisit the Mercury retrograde period, which took place uh, not that long ago. It also happened between 21 degree of Virgo back to 8 degree of Virgo. So how interesting that these two planetary energies, retrograde motion, the starting point and the ending point are exactly the same. So it pretty much tells us that with Mercury retrograde, we were meant to be thinking about the system we put in place, and then now with Juno, we're going to have to commit to that system. Also, it could have uh, uh, talked to you about reevaluating your lifestyle, your working style. Uh, Virgo is very internal. So something needed to be born internally within us. It's the birth of the thought in the sign of Virgo. But now you're going to have to make it somehow practical. You're going to have to commit to it and you're going to have to find ways of uh, working with it. And that's what Juno really wants there. Now, of course, we have uh, that Saturn opposition to it, right? So often it brings some elements of obstacles in relationship, right? Or we might not want to be working on something because uh, Pisces is all about escapism. And Saturn is pretty much a dark cave. So I just want to be running away from all these type of challenges. So we tend to be giving up. Or it is also possible that we are going to be worried about, you know, Virgo tends to be worried, right? Uh, usually it's the worry of how the future is going to play out. So we can be worried about contractual agreements, we can be worried about our marriage, um, how it's going to play out in the future. But if you are single, you might start being worried that the time is ticking. The clock is ticking and that's Saturn, the clock, the time. So am I going to stay, uh, uh, remain single? And uh, am I going to be a spinster? All these type of topics could be coming up. Uh, also, it's very possible that you are meant to be committed to a work project you might have started during the Mercury retrograde period. And now it is telling you that you need to finish that off. Commit to it. Uh, maybe you need to take it apart and then fixing certain type of bits and bobs here and there, make adjustments, put them back together and get it going. Also, you know what? It depends on what house it falls into, right? But Virgo is all about repairing something. So maybe you want to be repairing your health. Maybe you want to be implementing some routines into your life to improve your lifestyle. Virgo is all about improvements. So improve your health, improve your relationship department. You know what? Um, I can tell you that I have gone through a very strong uh, scorpionic period in the last three years. I mean, I had two solar returns happening in, a uh, stellium happened in my eighth house in my solar return chart. Um, and then, of course, now I'm having the Sun and Mars uh, conjunction also happening. Um, 
So I feel like, you know, loads of transformation. And what usually happens is that people are afraid to change. And uh, it, of course, it can be very scary. Uh, but Juno does not want you to make a huge change, just step by step, as much as the soul is able to. Juno can represent the sole contractual agreement of your chart as well, actually. So improve your lifestyle, improve your partnership. Now, we had the first opposition to Saturn, and that happened on the 19th of October. We're going to have two more. One is March 12th, and the other one is uh, July 6th. So you can see that these are going to be the hot zones. <clears throat> when loads of relationships can go a little bit rocky. Both planets are all about commitments. So often what it could indicate is that we have got, you know, two different projects are running and we get divided somehow and the battery is starting to run out. Remember, Virgo has got a tendency to work 70 hours a week. It makes them happy. That's okay. But Virgo does need to be making sure that they make money out of something they can put their heart into. It's because the second sign from Leo. And let's just think about this um, uh, Juno in the sign of uh, Leo for a second, because that's also interesting. So Juno was um, in the sign of Leo just before October 19 for about four months. And that is exactly the time when we had uh, Venus retrograde happening. So with Venus retrograde, we were meant to be looking at things we love doing, uh, exploring something we can pour our heart into. And from a money point of view, Venus, it was making several conjunction, conjunctions to Juno. So now Juno is moving into the sign of Virgo, Venus was moving into the sign of Virgo alongside with her as well. Of course, Venus since then left the sign of Virgo, so she is uh, now in Libra. Uh, but she was in the sign of Virgo beforehand with her. So it's about making those, not necessarily dreams, but those desires. Leo is very much about our hard desire, uh, a reality somehow looking at our commitments in details. And I feel like because Virgo is a um, earth sign, earth is about stability and finances. So we might need to be looking at our finances a little bit as well. By the way, Juno will be making a, a trine to Jupiter as well. And uh, almost at the very same time when it makes the, the, the oppositions to Saturn. So... Uh, Jupiter can be the saving grace there, which could really much talk to you about making attempts to connect to people. I mean, one of the trines is going to be happening in November uh, 11th, which just happened uh, not that long ago. And the next one is going to be the first week of March. And also, we're going to have a trine to Uranus as well. So it could really talk to, especially to people who are single, uh, to meet someone quite out of the blue. Uh, but some of the other negative sides of this, that because Virgo tends to be picky, and Juno is a bit picky as well. Obviously, she has gone through loads of um, hurtful moments in her marriage, so she has to be selective. So are you being a little bit picky? Are you too critical towards others? Or maybe are you too critical towards yourself? In what ways do you want your Virgo house cups to be perfect? Because perfectionism is not going to work. And that's exactly what that Saturn opposition is telling you. Letting go of the idealism and knowing that there is reality as well at the same time. I mean, it's interesting that statistically speaking, those people who have got a very prominent Juno in their chart, such as Juno in uh, um, conjunction to the sun, moon, or one of the angles, um, 
they tend to be gaining power through a marriage or certain type of business partnerships. I do have son in uh, conjunction to Juno very tightly. They are only half a degree apart from each other. And that's exactly what kickstarted my astrological journey as well, a partnership. So, but I, you know, I show commitments towards that partner, you know, but I, I feel like with this Virgo and Pisces, uh, Juno, Saturn opposition, it, there is definitely an element of need to make compromises, but being loyal. And unfortunately, it could bring in topics around infidelity as well. So, of course, it would talk to us about that some of us will experience challenging moments, um, you know, challenging moments in their relationship. Now, from a worldview point of view, you know, Virgo Pisces pretty much rules the immune system. So it could represent that we need to be um, reinforcing the protection of our immune system, Saturn as in protecting, um, and the immune system comes from the axis altogether. Also, it could talk to us about how the medical services are going to get restructured in the next 10 months. So maybe we're going to see some uh, medical organizations coming together, merging or getting um, separated. So there is an element of a divorce there as well. Uh, maybe uh, there is a big organization and the medical part of that is going to get independent, for example. Of course, it could pretty much talk to us about how much of an issue uh, it's going to be to have anything to do with, uh, for example, employees, staffing, uh, up a restaurant, for example, and so on. You know, when Juno is in the sign of Virgo, we are looking for stability and safety becomes a important matter in our relationship as well. But Juno in Virgo tends to be choosing a partner who is reliable, someone we can count on. There's an element of practical involvement when we choose that uh, partner. And it, it, you know, I'm not trying to be shady with this, but they are not overly romantic. Now, Saturn in the sign of Pisces maybe actually wants us to take our romantic life a little bit more serious. But one of the main meaning of Saturn in Pisces is just let's cut out romanticism and let's fo focus on the long-term elements of our partnerships and marriages. So... This combo is bringing us a very practical approach to relationships. So uh, we know that the relationship has become a huge topic nowadays, right? Especially with people are fighting for their rights uh, when it comes to equality. Can I play at the Olympic Games? Can I not play at the Olympic Games? Uh, can I be a woman? Can I be a man? You know, all these type of equality matters. So this seems to be actually becoming a major topic for uh, many of them. Now, with Saturn being part of it, it's all about building. But building blocks. So we're always going to be running. It's kind of like you are trying to build a tunnel and then you always uh, run into some type of um, uh, memorial or some ruins which has got some historical values. And then you're going to have to find different types of ways. And then you're going to have to kind of walk with a magnifying glass to make sure that you don't ruin anything, right? So here we start looking uh, for qualities in partner who are practical and serious about a relationship, but also someone who thinks ahead or someone who has got organizational skills or, you know, what Juno in Virgo is not so much about physical attractions. Um, in the sign of Leo, it was very concerned about it. Here we are a lot more concerned about how to make this work in the long run. Um, Juno in Virgo plays things a little bit safe as well. 
So he doesn't like surprises. Actually, surprises worries them a lot because they might not be able to pretend they like it, you know, or is it going to be useful and so forth. These questions might be coming up. But, you know, Virgo is called Virgo for a reason. It is, you know, somehow we can connect that with virgins, right? So there is the sexual sexuality part uh, coming up with uh with uh, especially with Juno too. I mean, Juno, when it comes to the, um, you know, some of the occult interest of Juno, it would talk about Tantra. It could talk about soulmate. It could talk about spiritual connections, match made in heaven type of thing. So it could really talk to us about running into someone who we feel that, you know what, it's meant to be. There is a karmic connections to it. But with Saturn, we're going to run into some type of blockages with that. And it might not be forming as quickly as we want it to. Imagine that you have got a boyfriend, she has got a girlfriend. We have to be waiting for each other. And that's why the relationship is getting somehow tested. So Saturn is testing relationships. In the world, it would be something like, you know what, two countries are trying to make some type of negotiations and they always run into some type of blockages with Saturn. Or their alliances are getting tested, whether it is strong enough or not. So it could talk about a third party who is trying to rip them apart somehow. Often um, what happens with Juno being involved, that there are these sexual power games going on. Uh, so we are giving the power away. We do not want to make, um, you know, the intimacy going on <clears throat> and so forth. So intimacy can become an issue with uh, Juno in uh, Virgo. The other thing which came to my mind is <clears throat> because Virgo rules uh, military services. And I cannot forget the fact that Sun and Mars conjunction also happens in uh, Scorpio, which can talk to, to, talk to us about terror attacks, nuclear weapons, bombs, uh, also police force. So, because Virgo is associated with uniform, this could really talk to us about, imagine with Saturn, which represents the borders, that they are going to get the borders somehow, you know, stronger. So either we build something on the border or there's going to be a lot more uh, police force for some reason. It could talk to us about you know, I mean, Juno is quite a vengeful energy as well. Obviously, she got cheated on. So it could talk about some elements of military action uh, against uh, someone because uh, they felt uh, treated unfairly. So I, I don't necessarily like that, um, you know, I mean, it has got, unfortunately, its negative side as well. Um, hopefully, this is just bringing the merge of countries. And actually, it could also talk to us about agreements are being made about, let's say, what town goes to this country and so forth. So somehow rearranging the borders. Let's hope that's... Um, going to be happening with that. Um, I would say when it comes to Juno and Virgo, it's a mega perfectionist combination. Both of them are really picky. So remember when you're looking at your own chart, where the Virgo cusp is and how can you become a perfectionist there? Is that your downfall or you just need to be a little bit more organized now, a little bit more committed to your Virgo cusp. So for example, it's going to be in my seventh house. So of course, it's going to be bringing the topic of committed partnership into my life until August. Um, and uh, 
But also it could just talk to me about to watch out because I might be picky when it comes to choosing a partner, which unfortunately I tend to be. So there is something to clear out there. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please press like, subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you on this new transit webinar I'm going to be holding on the 2nd of December. Have a good one. Bye-bye.